So we're doing an update to XE10, plus we're going to do a workstation install. And we've now downloaded this one first for a regular update. And it'll be sitting right here. We're going to run it. And then um, we get our user account control. Put in our password. XE10. And, and then we're going to find the path where it stalls it. And this is the correct path for this user. And this would be the Project W normally, but he's got a slightly different path. And this gets us the 7.1.1 in this example here. Okay. Now, the current shortcut that you use to start project is where? Up here at the this guy right here? And then it runs the update and you're on 7.1.1. Okay. Now, we're going to install the workstation part of this, correct? Okay. We still potentially have the, the, uh, the crystal reports issue. Okay. Well, we'll, to, we'll pause the tape. That was, that was how it originally got started. I'll zoom. The first thing we're going to do is get our path in clipboard. So it's going to be, in this case, P drive. Okay. And then what we're going to do is we're going to run this workstation install right here. Click, click. And then what we're going to do is go through it. And you'll notice it puts it into a user public temp path. Okay? Our public path, purposely. That way the update can happen automatically without any user intervention. And then this is our data folder. It, it read the INI file and found the data folder. So that's where your data is and that is correct. If you had not, if you had not, if it didn't read it, then you would want to actually, you know, put it in there manually to be P colon data like that. Okay. We hit next. And we hit next. Now these are the paths that you want to put in your antivirus software. Or you actually want to go back to P drive. So it doesn't do any scanning all the way back there. Got it? Okay. If you want, we can put that in clipboard. That way you can and put it in post in a notepad. Right, okay. Post it right here. And there you can add that path, those paths to your exclusions. Okay. And then we'll go ahead to install. And it's downloading. This download installs everything. Now, since we've already done 11.5, you don't need to do this. And you've already got your Borland settings already ready, so you don't need to do this. But on a workstation where you haven't, then you go ahead and check these additional things so that it it does these additional steps for you. Okay. And um, and then we're done. Hit finish. Oh, oh, I didn't mean to do that. So, oh, we forgot to do run as admin. We got to make sure we do run as admin because if you don't do that, it, it'll mess up on you. So that's why we're getting all these error messages. We forgot to do run as admin. Okay. Um, so there's your minimum settings file right there. And we've already done this part. Okay. So now we have a new shortcut on the desktop. Right here. Wherever it is. There it is right there. So this is the new shortcut. And if you want to change the icon later on, you're on. But if, you, if we open up the properties on this guy, you'll notice right over here that it's in the local machine public dovnet folder. And... It's got uh, the data path to be our data path like so. It's got the window parameter already there for you. And it has Crystal, uh, Crystal 11.5 already there for you as well. And it's got the install parameter. These other parameters on the end don't matter except on the terminal server. And if you want to put your login ID, what, SOS? SOR. SOR. 
you can put your your uh, ha your login ID like that. Now it will prompt you. Do you want to save the changes? Because this is in the public folder for a single user machine. Yes, you want to. You can set the user ID, but on a terminal server, you're not going to want to do this. Right. Okay, and that's it. So now we should be able to run this puppy like so, and it's up. And then you put your password and call it a happy day. All right. Okay. Now. If you if we have an update that goes in place, we can force an update here for demonstration purposes. Uh, and this is what happens. You'll get this differential message on the workstation. They will simply press OK. It launches regular project system startup. It does a copy. And then it starts project up with a new version. Okay?